everyone, my name is Elle and welcome to my channel. Today I have my second makeup basket for 2017. I decided to do this so that I could kind of rotate through my products and decide what I wanted to keep, what I want to get rid of, and what I can possibly pan in the future. It's also a little bit of a rotating project pan because anything that I can keep in and use for my everyday makeup, I will. And then I'll be able to finish things as well. So like, there's no point in opening like a new mascara or something. I might as well just finish the one I'm working on. So that's pretty much how this is going to work. So I will go through all of the products now that are in my basket. This includes the things that I talked about in my intro, my first makeup basket, as well as things that I pulled to use over the last two weeks. And this is just everyday makeup stuff. Some categories I don't have anything to talk about because they are in other projects or I simply had way too many to talk about. Most of like the colored products like my eyeshadows, lipsticks, eyeshadows, pan that palette, project pan porn, and lipsticks, lipstick roulette, and then I didn't talk about blush because I actually used a few blushes and a lot of them are sort of my keeping staples. I just felt like it was too much to go through and I'm not really focusing on blush right now anyway because I've got so much else going on. Anyway, so uh, I go through these roughly in order that I would put them on my face. So the first thing is an eyeshadow primer. And my eyeshadow primer of choice was the Wet n Wild Photo Focus eyeshadow primer. I really ended up liking this eyeshadow primer a lot. I have not so much as reached for my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion, not once. And if I have put aside my Urban Decay, which has been my holy grail for a few years now, uh, that says a lot. I did end up marking some of these products, the ones that I could somewhat confidently figure out where it was, but it's mostly just for my benefit so I can track my progress because I plan on continuing to use this one. Uh, this is the only other eyeshadow primer I have besides the Urban Decay one, and as long as I'm loving it, I'm gonna keep using it, and hey, maybe this will be my new holy grail. I had two face primers, the Maybelline Baby Skin and the Body Shop Skin Primer Moisturize It. So the Baby Skin one I'm gonna put aside and pan later. I don't really like it that much, but it's decent. It's decent enough that I don't hate it. So I could see myself panning it. That's sort of the thing when I come to making these decisions on whether or not I'm going to pan something or declutter it. It's whether or not I even somewhat enjoy using it. Like as long as I don't hate using it, I can use it a little bit longer. I don't want it just to just declutter or de-stash for the sake of decluttering. I just feel like it's so wasteful when I could use that product. You know, it's not my favorite thing. I probably won't repurchase it, but there's no harm in finishing it up. So I'm going to put that aside, making a separate little box container of things that I want to pan in the future. And the Body Shop primer I am going to keep in this project because I feel like I can work through this and finish this pretty soon. I don't have a whole lot left of it. There's not really a whole lot. So because I've been liking to use it, like there's a difference between liking and loving. So it's like I can tolerate it. No, that's not even the right word. It's not that I tolerate it. It's like, it's fine. I just know that I have something else that works better for me in that category. That's one thing I'm really hoping to accomplish with this is to get my category numbers down so I have one thing in each category. So this is a, a moisturizing or hydrating primer. I only need one of those. And I found the one that I am head over heels for. So why would I have more than one? It doesn't make much sense. So I'm gonna keep this one in the rotation. So for the sake of my makeup basket and the goals I'm hoping to accomplish, I am going to rotate in two more primers. So they're both from Rimmel. This one is the Lasting Finish Primer. It says it's skin perfecting, supposed to increase foundation wear up to eight hours. And this one is the Stay Matte Primer, which is exactly that. It's a mattifying primer. So we will see what I think about these two. My Becca Under Eye Corrector and the Bare Minerals Stroke of Light Eye Brightener. These are two things I usually use in combination underneath my eyes to help brighten and lighten and all that good stuff. So this is pretty much daily use with this guy. Occasionally I will just use this one depending on how dark my eye, under eye circles are because this is much thicker than this one is. So sometimes I will just use this a little bit because it's a liquid. So. And I just threw it. I have been really liking this a lot. I never really thought of an under eye corrector in a liquid form. I never really used under eye correctors that often. Like this is a thing that rocked my world and now trying this one, I really like them together. And I can't really see myself not having both. I know it's so extra. I told you guys, I'm not a minimalist. I'm never gonna be one. So anyway, uh, after that I have foundations. So 
I had two foundations and a foundation and mixer. I'm going to take them both out and pan them later because they are both reasonable foundations. The problem I have with them is that they're too dark. I really like the Fit Me foundation formula. It's a very nice natural coverage foundation. It's just the shade didn't match. Although I saw that recently they came out with more shades. So I would probably buy this in my correct shade in the future because I really like that. I really enjoyed the, the formula of it, but I've had to mix it with the oil-based Makeup Forever um, white foundation mixer, which changed the consistency of it. Obviously, if you're adding an oil to a foundation, it's going to end up making it more dewy and luminous. And that's not what I ended up being drawn to. Of course, what I plan on using is not what I end up wanting to use. And the other foundation is an actual luminous foundation already. It's the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Soft Luminous Foundation in Shell. This was also just a little bit too dark for me. I really could not use it on its own unless I was using just a little bit of it. If I just used a tiny bit of it, then it was okay to use on its own. But if I did like a full face, like really going hard with foundation to get full coverage, I needed to mix it or it was just too dark. So I'm moving all three of these things out um, because I just don't feel like being luminous right now and I don't, I just don't want to use these foundations anymore. I will plan to use them in the not so distant future so that I can pan them and use them up. I ended up reaching for my Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation and finishing it. So I thought that I would just mention it now um, because it was part of my everyday makeup. I wasn't intending to use it, but it was just so quick and easy because I don't have to mix this with anything. This is my perfect shade. So I haven't repurchased this yet, but I guarantee you I will be repurchasing it for the sixth time because this is my favorite foundation. I love everything about this foundation. So that's what I was reaching for when I didn't want to be like, luminous and too oily. So what I'm swapping in to use now is this CoverGirl Clean Oil Control Foundation in Ivory. It does look like it might be somewhat of a better color match for me. I really don't even remember using that foundation. I know it's awful. And I'm also putting in this CoverGirl um, BB Cream in Fair to Light. I used to really like this. I used it, I panned it, I repurchased it, and then I just didn't use it because I had so many things. I actually am wearing this BB Cream on my face right now, and I do like it from that one time I used it. So I think I will enjoy using this. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? My preferences will change, and all of a sudden I'll be putting my face in oil. Um, but just in case I needed a lightener, I pulled out my one from the Body Shop. This is just the shade Adjusting Drops in white. Um, it's not luminous or oily or any of that stuff. It's just a straight up white foundation mixer. So I thought that if I happen to need it, if I happen to need it, I can pair these two together. I'm still using these two concealers and will continue to use these two concealers. It's the Becca Aqua Luminous Concealer and the Kat Von D Lock It Concealer in Whiteout. I will say though, I really dislike the Kat Von D concealer, but I don't have another white concealer option. If I did, I would totally declutter this because it's just so thick. It does not work well for me. I don't like the Phil Lockett uh, foundation. No surprise, I don't like the concealer. And the Becca is fine, it's just too dark. Next, face powders. So I had this one from Pure. It was the 4-in-1 Pressed Mineral Makeup. And I didn't use this a whole lot because I felt like it was giving me too full coverage. I didn't mind it, but I just wasn't into like the really full coverage stuff. So I'm going to put this aside and probably work on it at a later time. I know I'm keeping a lot of stuff, um, but that's because I really do want to pan things instead of just decluttering them. So um, I have the Silica Gel Microspheres in this Laura Mercier container. I do love this stuff. I feel like it really gives me that flawless skin finish without being heavy. The Smashbox Step by Step contour palette. Um, I'm keeping this guy in as well because I actually did like this contour shade. I don't like the bronze shade. It really is too orange. I can't really do anything with it. The highlight shade is pretty nice to sort of sharpen up the contour. This is a pretty dark shade for me, but it works really well when I'm filming. I found like the contour blush I was using was really, really subtle, and this is a little bit darker. I can use it daily with a lighter hand, which is what I've been doing, but I like that I can actually get a lot more pigmentation out of it. So it's been useful for both my worlds. I will mention a bronzer that I used. I know it's weird, but this is the one bronzer that I really like. This is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. Um, I'm wearing this today too. I 
sometimes want to be bronzy but sometimes I can't pull it off because it's too orange and this is a really good bronzer for me because it's not too dark. I really enjoyed using this. I'm not planning on keeping it in my basket. If I happen to use it within the next two weeks, I use it. I'm not keeping myself from using anything that I really want to. Like the main purpose here is just to try things to figure out what I want to do with them. So I had two highlighters, um, ColourPop Strapped, which is this beautiful rosy pink highlighter. Very beautiful. I really do like the ColourPop Cream highlighters. They do take a while to go through, so I will go through them, just not right now. So I'm pulling that one out. And then I had this little sample from Kevin O'Coin. This was the Celestial Powder and Candlelight, and I did like this one as well. It's a little bit dark on its own, um, so I had to use a pretty light hand, so it wasn't like a super glow, but it's definitely more of a natural, like, everyday highlight as opposed to like the super glow although to be completely honest i did use the anastasia ultimate glow kit a few times because that thing makes me so happy i just love being glittery um, but i'm trying to i'm trying to not use it so much because i love it so much if that makes sense at all um anyway the two highlighters i picked out for this basket rotation is a liquid one from L'Oreal, the True Match Lumi. Um, this is the Liquid Glow Illuminator Prime and Highlight, although I can't imagine using this as a primer. This is in the shade Ice and it's a very light, cool toned highlight. And then for the powder highlight, I chose the uh, Baked Highlighter from e.l.f. This is in Moonlight Pearl and this is beautiful. This is my highlight right now because um, I found it in my makeup box just giant plastic container I have all my makeup in right now and I went I didn't even I didn't even remember I had this I was completely shocked so I pulled it out used it and went yeah this is good this is good I can see myself using this because it's not really dark I can wear it on its own and really build it up and just like shine for days which is what I like even every day <laughs> the next category is eyeliners and I am working through all of my eyeliners so I didn't have any particular ones I was just going to choose as I needed them so I do have four eyeliners that I am decluttering I have two mini eyeliners from buxom number four and number five it's a black and a brown I felt like I was just really tugging at my lid and I wasn't really getting any pigmentation and I have so many black and brown eyeliners that why would I keep something that was that bad? And this one from Marc Jacobs, the little highlighter gel crayon in blacker. This one is dried out, so again, I couldn't get any pigmentation from it. And then the fourth one I'm decluttering is from Touch and Soul, and this is the Style Neon Superproof Gel Eyeliner. I had such high hopes for this. Like, it's such a beautiful color. No pigment, nothing at all. Not even a whisper of pigment. It's just useless. So these four are going. Now for eyeliners I did use and I'm keeping, I have quite a few. I have eight pencil liners and one liquid. And the liquid, liquid I will keep using. Um, this is from Ico London. It's the I Do Liquid Eyeliner. So it's just a little mini black eyeliner. I'm wearing it today. I've had such a struggle with eyeliner, um, trying to get better at it. I need. I ordered the lash glue that I really like as well. That's part of the problem, is that the lash glue that I have doesn't really keep my lashes on my eyes. Anyway, that was somewhat related. So this is a pretty decent black liquid liner. I'm just gonna keep that in the rotation. And then all these other eyeliners I have. So I will talk and show them to you pretty quickly um, because I mean, they're not really super exciting, at least in my opinion. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, um, but I just, they're eyeliners. Like, What is there to say? All right. Here are swatches of the eyeliners. There are a few colors in here. It's not just just black, although some of the shades look somewhat similar. So the first one here on this side is just a standard black eyeliner. This is from CoverGirl. It's the Liquid Line Blast. I'm not sure of the shade name, but it's just a black eyeliner. Next, I have some guys from Urban Decay. So I have uh, Crave, which is like a black brown shade. I have Cult, which is one of the 24-7 velvets, and it's a matte green eyeliner, like a, a really dark green. And then I have Ultraviolet, which is a blue 
eyeliner and I like to put that in my waterline for a little pop of color so I do really like the Urban Decay 24 7 eyeliners just not as much as I used to like them it seems to happen these these two these two I love especially this one I love the Stila Smudge Sticks so incredibly much I still think about the eyeliner I finished like it must be a year ago at this point damsel I still think about it as soon as I can justify buying it I'm gonna buy it because I love I love it so much so I have a lionfish which is a sparkly brown and I have half moon which is a gray so I really enjoyed using both of these guys they're just so easy to use so nice to use products that you really love. Um, I have a yellow eyeliner, bright yellow. This is from Lancome. This is in Soleil. It's a yellow eyeliner. This is also fun to put in my waterline. I actually have my, it in my waterline right now. If I'm wearing some sort of um, basic eye look, I like to put that in my waterline sometimes because it just, it's a little something different and unexpected. But when I want to have a brightening eye look, I've been using this one from Lise Watier, and this is Nude Velour. And that's, it's, it really is such like a velour product. Like it's just so um, velvet-y. It's more velvet than the Urban Decay velvet liner. So it's just a beigey nude shade. So instead of having that stark white waterline, I just have something a little bit more closer to my skin tone. And the other eyeliners I used I'm going to talk about these in a favorites. I think I have already, but I am not going to go into detail. Um, the Urban Decay Glitter Liners. I just picked up two more because I love these things. I'm always wearing them on my face. Always. I do have all of my brow things still. Um, nothing really spectacular or important to say about any of these. I just am using them in whatever combination speaks to me at the day. And then mascaras. So... I actually finished the little mini Dior, uh, Dior Show Iconic Overcoat Mascara. Loved this mascara. Sad that it's done. I've got so many other things to work through. And do I really want to spend like 30 something dollars on a mascara? I don't know. Um, so I still have two lash primers, the Dior Show Maximizer White Lash Primer and the Tinted Primer. They're real from Benefit, which gives your brows that like brown tint. And the mascara I decided to swap in is from YSL. So this is just, it's just a basic mascara, you know? I, I'm just gonna use this till it's done. That's it. I've used it a couple times so far because I ran out of the, the Dior one and it's fine. It's nothing special. I don't like it as much as the Dior one right now, um, but time will tell. I've only used it a couple days, so that's the beauty of this project. All right, so that is everything for my makeup basket. I'm still really new to this format, so if you guys have any suggestions or feedback, let me know. Um, I'm trying to figure out the most efficient way to do these because I don't want them to be like 30 minutes long because ain't nobody got time for that. So if you guys have any suggestions, feedback, things I could include or not include, or if you think it's worthwhile showing the things that I'm just constantly using, or if I should maybe just show those once a month instead of every update. And if you still think the two week update thing is good, let me know. Like I said, I'm open to all kinds of suggestions. Your feedback is what has really helped me grow and improve my channel. And that's what I'm always trying to do. That's why I really appreciate your guys' feedback. And I always try to take that feedback and apply it in the best way I possibly can. I am just constantly learning, constantly trying to improve, and I need your help to do so. So thank you guys so, so much for spending some time with me here today. I really appreciate it. And I hope I will see you in my next video. Bye.